Oh, shut up. The interactive movies were the worst, and when you talk about bad FMV games, you're usually talking about these. Probably the most notorious of these was Fox Hunt, even though nobody really played it. It just looks stupid, and I mean dumber than an episode of VIP. It's about some hapless dope who enjoys striking poses like Ace Ventura as he gets recruited by the CIA to track down a supervillain. Mostly you just spin around in circles clicking the use button until something happens. Usually something very, very stupid. let this go on any longer. The last game I'd like to highlight is one that I remember very fondly, but nobody else seems to. A game based somewhat on a Keanu Reeves movie, based somewhat on a William Gibson hallucination, Johnny Mnemonic, a game that only ran on Windows 3.1, a game so heinous that installing it somehow torched my master boot record. I didn't even think that was possible with DOSBox, and even when I recovered, it still didn't work. You don't even want to know what I had to do to get this footage. Even back in the day, trying to get games to work under fucking Windows 3.1 was about as fun as getting a tombstone pile driver in a shit-filled toilet. The story is structured almost exactly like the movie. Johnny's a mnemonic courier, a guy who can smuggle data in his head like a hard drive. He has to make room for this information by erasing parts of his own memory and apparently his acting talent. Oh, I got it, Ralphie. And a couple of babysitters, too. What are those blokes doing They're guarding their property, Ralphie. No, you listen. I'm a dead man if I don't get this out of my head. Just, um, calm down. Calm down? Now, I don't think anybody could have made this no material compelling, Ralphie. but this is just hammy. Now, you'll notice the game is almost exactly like Fox Hunt. You barely even played these games. All you could do was turn left or right, move forward, or just hit a generic use key. And half the time you didn't even know what you'd end up using. Especially in Johnny Mnemonic, where everything is futuristic and you have no idea what the fuck anything is. Actually, there is another key shown in the instruction book that it calls Download. And you'll only use it a grand total of like three times to download the access code. Well, why can't I just hit the Use key? Speaking of which, never ever try to use the computers in Johnny Mnemonic. Because every time you try, the game assumes you're trying to rip the data out of your head, it microwaves your brain, and you instantly die. Oh, this is ridiculous. Why do they even give you this option? You'll find a computer terminal in almost every location, but it's guaranteed suicide if you try it. It's like some kind of idiot trap where you wander into a new room and say, well, hey, here's a computer. Maybe this one will work. Nope. And you need to get your computer to work because you need the three parts of the download code which was destroyed. Luckily, there's an artificial intelligence in the internet that's willing to help you. But there's a catch. I have the download code. It's stored in three separate data port locations here in Newark. What do you mean you've hidden the download code? Why would you do that? I mean, I need that code before my head explodes. What, you're telling me you're some kind of artificial intelligence? And you can't store and email me three fucking JPEG files? What the fuck good are you? I'm sorry, Johnny. <sighs> anyway, to get the computers to work, you need to collect the three components of the neural interface, and without them, using the computers is an instant death sentence. You'd think Johnny would be smart enough not to try plugging his brain into a neural interface without the required equipment, but nope. He's all too happy to flash fry his frontal lobes every time you command it. What an asshole. Wish I could get out of the game this easily. So, the main point of the game is searching for the computer parts. Most of the time, you'll just rummage around people's houses and covertly steal their stuff, putting the items into your infinitely deep jacket pocket. 
And most of the time, the game gives you no idea of where you're supposed to be going, what you're supposed to be doing, what items you're supposed to collect, what the items you're collecting actually do, or where you're supposed to use them. You have no control over when Johnny uses them. If he has the particular item at the time he needs to use it, he uses it. If he doesn't have it, most of the time you just die. And when you die, you have no, no idea why you died, or what item you might have needed to prevent dying. Why is there money in the toilet? Anyway, you'll die a lot. What'll happen is the Yakuza hitman with a techno whip coming out of his thumb and his sidekick, some white guy who looks like Andy Dick on steroids, will burst into the room with guns and chase you through the level. Problem is, you never know which way to go, and the game is outright merciless. There aren't any hints. You just have to pick a direction and go. If you're wrong, you get shot. If you're right, you run to the next screen and repeat the process over and over again until you've played it so many times, you've just memorized the proper sequence. It's like playing Dragon's Lair without the flashing hints. Do I take the door? Nope. The hall? The window? Oh. I know, I'll grab the gun on the floor. Oh, come on! What's worse is the action is so choppy and poorly edited that it's hard to tell even what's happening. It's so dark and the action is so spastic, these guys could be coming from anywhere. It's like the editor is having a stroke. And once you finally figure it out, the scene usually concludes with either you or your bodyguard Jane getting into a fist fight, either with a Yakuza guy or his friend who looks like Andy Dick. From here the camera switches to this hilarious point of view shot, where you see your opponent juking and jiving. Wow! It's like I'm in the game! It's like I'm really getting my ass kicked by Super Andy Dick! Just check out this amazing fighting engine. There's no health gauge, no rules, no mercy. A lesser man might be scared of Andy Dick, but I am the Lord of Tekken and I will air juggle his ass! What the? Hey! Ow! Oh, what the fuck? What am I? Is there any strategy to this? Well, apparently, yes, there are tips on how to fight effectively. Let's look at what the instruction book has to say on fight mode. You enter into fight mode as either Johnny or Jane when they and the enemy square off against each other. Uh, brilliant, thanks. Uh, both will enter a fighting stance. No way! To fight, press punch, kick, or block when the screen goes to letterbox format. You can only choose one action per opportunity. Yeah, that's what I was doing wrong, because I keep trying to perform the rare simultaneous flying punch kick that I learned from that Shaolin Monastery. And no kicking while blocking, that's cheating! In general, it is best to punch or kick when the enemy is moving away or their posture creates an opening. Block when you sense the enemy attacking. Uh, during the fight, you will see reaction shots. If the opponent is struggling, you are winning. If Johnny or Jane is stumbling, you are losing. No shit. If you win, Johnny or Jane returns to full strength and the game continues. If you lose, the game is over and you return to the main menu. Okay, how fucking stupid does this game think I am? Winning is good, losing is bad. Pro tip, don't get beaten up by Andy Dick. It doesn't even matter when you punch or kick. It's just dumb luck on whether or not you connect. And believe me, I tried following those bullshit instructions. It's useless. And you might as well forget about blocking. Just jam on the attack buttons and hope you win. There doesn't even seem to be any difference between punching and kicking. It's not like the game's sophisticated fighting AI will adapt to your master strategy requiring you to mix up your attacks into unpredictable combos. What a bunch of dog shit. You'll also fight one of Ralphie's cyborg bodyguards. In fact, you fight her every time you go to Ralphie's. As if she never gets tired of you kicking her ass. The bitch is persistent, that's for sure. But no wonder I'm having so much trouble beating her. Look at this. She's got hyperkinetic legs. Wonder Woman! Really, there's no reason to go to Ralphie's. You're supposed to go to the subway in order to get to Spider's place. And along the way, you encounter a crusty homeless man who just happens to be viewing pornography on some...